For the third time, the fragrance you wear makes you a boy, a dude, a guy, or a man? Yeah. We're back with a third installment of this very strange series that I'm so thrilled you guys seem to enjoy. It's been some time since we did part two. If you missed part two, watch part two. If you have no idea what this series is, well, it is kind of what it sounds like, but it is not meant to offend. It's simply meant to classify and to encourage you to think because there's not enough of that going on here on YouTube. It's all about entertainment. It's all about escapism, but let's actually think a bit. What we do here is I talk about a collection of fragrances that are very much hyped here in the community. They are at the forefront of the radar when it comes to fragrance recommendations. You see them in many videos across YouTube, and they are often some of the first fragrances that are put in front of new people to the hobby. And the one thing I'm trying to not say is that these are bad fragrances. I think they all smell great to varying degrees. Some of them I love, some of them are just okay, but none of them are bad to me. All I'm trying to do is offer some alternatives to what is being presented to you from every angle you look. In other words, it's totally okay to pause in the face of everyone saying you should get this one thing because it's good. And it usually is good, but that doesn't mean you have to get it right away. However, you can also take my alternatives as recommendations alongside the popular ones. So yeah, of course, please try these huge popular fragrances if you're interested in them. However, if you're looking for something a little bit off the beaten path, but along the same lines, check out my alternatives. I've classified them based on what I talked about before. Boy, dude, guy, man. So what does this mean? Boy is a fragrance that smells or gives off the feeling of being youthful and energetic, running around town, scooping up females. Maybe not really, but you're trying. We have the dude, more reserved, but still relatively juvenile. Maybe doesn't party quite as much, but still learning himself and still trying to fit in. We have the guy, has a slightly higher taste, but is still trying to please the crowd. And we have the man who is elegant and confident, meaning that they are not necessarily influenced by what is popular. They blaze their own trail. They present themselves in the way they choose to, therefore, they have authenticity. Not to mean there's anything wrong with pleasing people, but there's simply more to it than that. These categories are not meant to represent that one is better than the other. They are kind of a natural progression of maturity and growing. And also, they're not meant to be boxes. You're not just in one box. You can hop around as much as you want, no matter what age you are. It's all about outlook and intention. Let's dive right into it. Our first fragrance is a super popular one. I don't know how much it's still talked about today, but I'm pretty sure it's still out there in videos. This is one that I do like. I can easily say that I've liked it more in the past than I do now. I certainly don't really wear it anymore. My wife does not care for this one, but it has a soft spot with me. From Jean-Paul Gaultier, this is Ultra Mal or Ultra Male, however you want to say it. I call this boy sweet. It is sweet. It's very boyish. It's very juvenile. It is created by one of the best perfumers in the world, Francis Kirkjohn. So there is some thought and craft put into this fragrance, but how it comes off is something that's super fun, super playful, very sweet, almost bubblegum like with pear with a fresh lavender, a little bit of spicy cinnamon, vanilla. It's attractive. I wouldn't say it's sexy, but it is attractive. But before you go out and buy Ultra Mall, check out this one. I wouldn't say this is necessarily off the beaten path, Versace Eros Flame, but it is a little bit overlooked by its counterparts, especially the original, the EDP, the Parfum, all the flankers they've done, at least the concentration ones. This is the only true not concentration flanker they've done of Eros thus far. And I think it's one of the best. It gives Eros a little bit more character. Yes, it's still boyish and sweet, but there's a rich citrusy quality. There's some spices in here that gives it more depth. It smells more interesting to me while still being easy to wear, very playful, but not exactly like all the rest. So that's one I would consider, Versace Eros Flame. Let's talk about a fragrance that I call Guy Sweet. Again, slightly higher taste, but still trying to please the crowd. But there's a little bit more here. There's a lot of potential. There's more character. We're talking about Tom Ford Ombre Leather. I do really like Ombre Leather. My wife really likes it when I wear this fragrance. And you do see it everywhere for a reason. But that doesn't mean we have to just give into that and let that be the end of the road. There's a lot of other great fragrances to consider. One of them that I would consider a pretty decent guy sweet alternative is from a brand you may have never tried. This is from Lark 
and they call this Argentium. And this is a gorgeous, sweet, warm, spicy, oh, great atomizer. Oh man, it's beautiful. It is an ambery, woody scent. There's a warm sweetness in here. There is some spice, a little bit of oud that comes off a little bit medicinal, but elegant. However, the overall composition isn't what I would call super, super manly. It kind of leans a little unisex, perhaps, but it is pretty woody, which I think a lot of guys would find masculine enough. It does have a little bit of edge, similar to ombre leather, but it's not completely off the beaten path where the average person who doesn't care about fragrances is gonna find it a little bit too different. I think anyone would like this in the air. So check this one out. I got this one from my friends at Fragrapedia House. I'll link them down below. Use the code LUX2023 to save a little bit of money. Next is a big one. And I love this fragrance. I actually genuinely love it. I always have from YSL, La Nuit de Lome. This is my, what you could call vintage bottle. I've had it for almost seven years and it's almost a 10 year, no, yeah, it's a 10 year old bottle at this point, 2013 batch classic lovely stuff people would say the current formulations are not worth it that's up to you to decide go to any store and try it for yourself but i call this dude sweet not boyish but not necessarily elegant to me it still has very much a crowd pleasing appeal to it but definitely a little bit more character than your standard going out clubbing scent so what do I recommend instead of this one? Staying in the designer world, still pretty mass appealing, but a little different from Gucci. Is Gucci Guilty Eau de Parfum with off the wall notes like balsamic vinegar? Really? Yes. And maybe even some salt, but it ultimately comes off pretty sweet, a little bit fresh. You do get a little bit of that vinegar vibe. It's very subtle. It gives it just a little bit of character in the background and mainly up close. And there's also a good bit of rose in here, but it's done in a way that still smells pretty masculine. The overall composition is technically a bit unique, but it comes off as something that's easy to smell and kind of familiar, but worth checking out if you're looking for a good alternative to wear in the same situations you would wear La Nuit. No one's just talking about it quite as much. That is Gucci Guilty Eau de Parfum. Another highly heralded classic from Creed. I call this Man Fresh. Silver Mountain Water. This is a confident smelling fragrance. It is one that not everyone is gonna love. It has an unusual characteristic to it with that inky feel that everyone says. It's kind of metallic, inky fresh, a little bit of that juicy black currant that's not overly sweet. You do have some green tea in there making it kind of cooling and calming. It's just a cold smelling scent. It smells like cold mountain air with musk, but it comes off as something that's just very confidently fresh. However, it's everywhere and for good reason, but let me give you an alternative. Now, this fragrance is by no means unknown. It is a lot newer than Silver Mountain Water, and I think more and more people are talking about it these days, myself included. From Hermes, we have Terre d'Hermes Eau Gevray. Serves the same purpose, cooling and fresh, definitely has a masculine edge with its woodiness. It's tied to the Terre d'Hermes lineage, that woody, earthy vetiver is here, but it's made incredibly fresh and citrusy with a lot of grapefruit and citron and juniper berry, giving it its sharp and interesting character and it's perfect for the summer heat while still retaining elegance. Hermes, Terre d'Hermes Eau Gevray. Get you a sample of this, like right now. Got a link down below. Okay, don't get mad at me for this one. Again, I enjoy all of these fragrances. I love this one, my wife loves this one. Everyone loves this fragrance. It is an incredible scent and it's one of the best sellers from the house for a reason. However, again, it's everywhere. There's other things we can talk about, but we're talking about Ani, which I call Man Sweet. This is from Nishane. This leans pretty unisex and for a male to wear a unisex fragrance like this, I feel like they have to have quite a bit of confidence in themselves. That's why I consider it man sweet. Some guys are just completely averse to anything that is even deemed unisex. Nothing wrong with not liking sweet scents, but being afraid of them before you even smell them and calling them too girly, that's judging a book by its cover at its finest. But Ani is great. Tried and true, a lot of people love this stuff. Kind of vanilla, has an ambery feel, a little bit of a black currant, kind of juicy fruitiness. It's just succulent, it is elegant, and it's beautiful. But what are we recommending instead? One that you've probably never heard of. From Chantecaille, which I'm saying terribly wrong, forgive me. This is called Oud Fumé. 
This is an incense ambery fragrance. I don't get a ton of oud, honestly. I mostly get a warm, ambery, sweet, dark, resinous, smoky incense that is so smooth. This stuff is so incredibly smooth that it is criminal. Beautifully perfumed, a little bit linear on my skin, doesn't change a ton, but smells incredibly elegant. Maybe even a little bit more masculine than Ani, but just by a touch. So I wanted to check out if you've not heard of this, get you a sample. I'll link to what I can find down below. We have Oud Fume from, I'm not even going to say it, I'm going to screw it up again, but it, it was on the screen. You got it. I call this guy sweet, which might be a little bit controversial. For me, it's not the utmost elegant fragrance. It's something I would typically wear more in like a black leather jacket. Dark colors going out at night when I want to have that bad boy vibe. And to me, that is more of a guy vibe, which is fine. This is Carlisle from Parfum to Marley. This one had to grow on me over time. I used to not really like it at all, at least on my skin. Now it's one of my favorites from the brand. I really enjoy it. This one has this warm, sweet, spicy, dark, woody apple feel. There's a creaminess in a way, but it's mostly kind of rough smelling. A lot of earthy patchouli in here. It's a perfect going out guy fragrance when you want to have, again, a little bit more of a bad boy vibe, but not generic by any means. Definitely high taste here, but yet again everywhere. What else we got? Another slightly rough around the edges fragrance from Zaharoff, Signature Leather Tabak. This stuff is captivating. Oh, wow. This is teetering on man, but just for the sake of consistency, I'm going to stick with what I said. I'm going to call it Guy. It's fine. It's an incredible fragrance. Tobacco, slightly rough animalic leather that is a little smooth, but still has some edge. There's a sweet tobacco warmth in here. Kind of leafy, a little bit smoky. I honestly prefer it a little bit to Carlisle, if you're asking me, but I think it works in the same situations. The guy who likes Carlisle might enjoy Zaharoff Signature Leather Tabak. A nice recommendation that's not getting quite as much limelight as Carlisle, Zaharoff Signature Leather Tabak. Finally, Man Fresh. This is probably the entry fragrance for this brand, even though I don't think it wholly represents the brand and its aesthetic, at least these days, which is fine. It still works and it smells great. And I think the reason why it's such a great entry point is because it's probably the most approachable in the entire house. From Amouage, we have Reflection Man. Yet again, love this stuff. I've loved Reflection Man for a long time. It's so posh. So the fragrance I selected to replace it, I use that word lightly, had to have that same poshness. Slightly powdery, clean soapy neroli with some powdery jasmine with sandalwood smells gray and white it's creamy it's smooth powdery fresh clean floral woody musky gorgeous stuff but again there's more out there what else do i consider pretty dang posh that is also man fresh from tom ford fougere d'argent Oh man, as I've said, one of my favorite fougeres right now. It is an incredible fougere fragrance. Has that barbershop vibe. I would wear it in the same situation. Has that kind of creamy, sweet, coumarin, tonka bean feel that is very characteristic of this style of fragrance. Has that cleanliness from like a lavender, something aromatic, but it has this interesting woodiness from Akigala wood, bringing this cozy, slightly sexy vibe. I don't know how else to explain it. It's kind of an aphrodisiac for being a classy, clean, masculine fragrance. There's something about it that ignites something in people. I highly recommend getting a sample. I'm going to link to what I can find down below. I'd recommend this as an alternative. Again, maybe just alongside. Do check it out. Tom Ford, Fougere d'Argent. What is your idea about this whole video topic? I'm curious. Maybe it upset you. I hope it didn't because it's not that serious. But if it did, go ahead and respectfully tell me why and let's have a conversation about it. Love what you love, no matter what. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.